Hi, I'm Dean at uh, MPS here, and I'm here with Justin from the automotive team. And uh, quick intro or what you do at MPS. Hi, Dean. I'm the uh, technical marketing manager for automotive uh, high voltage and uh, low voltage bucks, boosts, and buck boosts. Um, so I do the product definition and uh, sales support for uh, our automotive power products. Okay. And today we're going to do a quick overview of our ZDP product, which is taking uh, taking place for a lot of peak current control products. So it's it's our our solution for that. And maybe we start with even going over quickly what is the most dominant, uh, let's say, control method for these products today. Yeah, so most people in automotive, uh, they use uh, peak current mode control. Uh, in other industries, they can use uh, a constant on time control, but in automotive, they're really concerned about EMI. Uh, so they need to have a fixed frequency operation. And the, uh, the most um, highest performing uh, control topology up till now has been uh, peak current mode control. Uh, but it does have a lot of drawbacks uh, compared to uh, you know, some, some of the things that we could do. Yeah, do you want to just talk, to, talk about why peak current control you know, has clearly been a successful choice um, till now? So what are the benefits that, uh, you know, reasons people use it? Yeah, absolutely. So compared to uh, constant on time, uh, you get the fixed frequency, which uh, makes your EMI uh, much easier to control. You know where those uh, spikes are going to come in. Um, and compared to a voltage mode, you get a consistent uh, body plot over the input voltage, um, and you also have a much simpler compensation. It requires fewer components to compensate, and you don't have to rely on the output capacitor ESR uh, to make your converter stable. Okay, so so they're able to hit performance requirements, EMI requirements, I'm assuming size, efficiency, all those requirements that up to today, that was the best choice. Um, do you want to maybe explain just for people how, how peak current control works? Sure, absolutely. So um, in the converter you have a uh, error amplifier, uh, usually a transconductive type or sometimes it's a voltage error amplifier. Uh, that's looking at the feedback voltage uh, and comparing to a reference um, so that sets your regulation voltage. Um, and then uh, the output of that is a, called the error signal. And then the error signal is compared to a, um, the current information, uh, the inductor current, usually measured from the high side uh, switch. Uh, there's also a slope compensation ramp that's added to avoid uh, subharmonic oscillation. Um, do you want to quick talk through what the harmonic oscillation is and, and why that's an issue? Sure. Yeah, in, uh, so in uh, peak current mode uh, control with fixed frequency, uh, if you did not have a uh, uh, if you did not have slope compensation, um, which is a fixed ramp that gets added to the uh, the inductor information, um, there would be a, a situation where if you have a duty cycle greater than 50%, uh, it would actually um, alternate between a large pulse and a, and a skinny pulse. Um, we can, we can yeah, we can, show, yeah, we can show what that looks like. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so this gives you a uh, beat frequency at half the switching frequency, where you're alternating between these two um, these two widths, which would create a nasty EMI and, and ripple situation. Okay, so even with the peak current control, if you get into that harmonic, then you have all sorts of yeah. you know, EMI broadcasting issues. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So like if you were switching at two megahertz, then the subharmonic would be at one megahertz, which is right in the AM band. Okay. Uh, so if you have an AM radio in the car, that would okay. interfere with that. Okay. Um, so with that being the dominant con control uh, concept that people are using, um, are there you know other any other advantages that 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 allows um, designers to have? I mean, they obviously are familiar with it because they've used it for a long time. Any other thing? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Familiarity is a big thing. I think yeah. people are comfortable with uh, peak current mode. Mm -hmm. They've used it for years. Uh, I mean, I, it's been uh, common since I joined the automotive industry over 15 years ago. Okay. Um, all right. Well, why don't we talk uh, talk about this this new uh, control technology that uh, that you you have a solution for? Absolutely. So as we see, like the power requirements increase. Uh, if you have a, a one amp or two amp buck, uh, peak current mode is great. It's simple. Your output components are, are relatively small. 
the transients, transients are not too harsh. Uh, but now we see there's more computing in the cars. Um, they need more power, and they also have um, very fast transients that they need to meet. Um, so we developed uh, zero delay PWM to help address that. Um, zero delay PWM, or ZDP as we call it, um, gives us a very fast transient, um, much like a COT uh, type control, but it also has a fixed frequency like a peak current mode, which allows us to uh, keep those EMI benefits, um, the stability benefits of the peak current mode, uh, while having um, a uh, much smaller uh, output capacitor requirements. Do you want to talk through, can you help me understand how um, the, you can have the fixed frequency and then still have a fast response where you're, you, know, you don't have too much clock time? I think is what often happens with a fixed frequency switch, right? You might have the transient and you have to wait to turn something on. So how does, how, how does this technology not have that problem? Yeah, absolutely. So in the peak current, in the peak current mode control, you not only have to wait for the clock, but you have to wait for the air amplifier to ramp up the comparator signal. Okay. Uh, the error signal. Um, the, in the zero delay PWM, we still have a similar loop, um, but it's specially tuned for zero delay PWM. And we also have a fast loop that is looking directly at the feedback voltage, um, and this allows us to instantly respond to a change in the output voltage. So you can instantly respond if you have two control loops going at once. Mm -hmm. So if you have a fixed frequency and you're in between clock cycles, what can you can you do anything? Or you still have to wait, right? Yeah. So so we do. Um, yeah. At at most, it's one clock cycle. Okay. Uh, to react to that. Yeah. But you don't have to wait for any of the area fire to move at all. Oh, okay. So with the with peak current control. You not only have to wait for your clock cycle, you have to wait for the error signal to what be calculated? Yeah, so whenever, like if the feed, if the output voltage drops because your load increased, right. then this creates a small difference yeah. between the reference and the, and the feedback, and then that gets amplified, yeah. and that slowly increases your current oh, signal. So, okay, so the error correction has to ramp up. Yeah. Okay, and then so with Z, ZDP, this, because you have the second control loop? Yeah, so this, okay. this the, when the feedback drops, yeah. it gets instantly fed into the uh, the, de the decision on how okay. much to turn on, so we can instantly turn on longer over um, the one clock cycle. Okay, so so your next clock cycle after the transient, you're able to ramp up the the what do you call it? Inductor that? current. The inductor current much quicker. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you have better control over, or you have but less, you have a quicker transient. Quicker, okay. Much okay. quicker transient. Okay, okay. Um, but uh, so on the performance uh, side, is there any other any other key important aspects that uh, yeah, you should I, know? I guess uh, we can say like, um, because we're doing a valley modulation instead of peak modulation, we're able to get a very narrow minimum on time, which allows us to operate at a higher switching frequency, which also can shrink your component size. Okay. And yeah, so you're efficient with the higher frequency. What does that do for your efficiency? Your efficiency goes down with when your frequency goes up. Okay. But your inductor size, like if you double your switching frequency, your inductor gets cut in half. Okay. So you save money. Okay. That size. Okay. So how does um, so when someone's trying to decide, you know, do I switch to this new technology? You know, they're thinking about what, efficiency, size, okay. cost, system cost, thermal, system size, probably all those things. So, yeah. how, like, if you had to do the comparison, <coughs> how, how do you how do you go about that? I mean, ZDP specifically doesn't impact your thermals. Uh, switching higher, like we, like if if thermals are concerned, you can keep the older, you know, the slower switching frequency. Okay. Like the same as what you would use for peak current mode. It just enables you. It gives you that, the flexibility to. Um, uh, um, to go to the higher switching frequency if, if your application can support it. Okay. Um, can you talk about the, so let's talk about the other advantages of ZDP for the, the, you know, the decision factors people typically are making. So what yeah. does it enable? Yeah, so I think I had a, like a top five benefits slide. I'm trying to think of what they were. Uh, I think one was the fixed frequency mm -hmm. versus COT. Uh, the um, 
uh, lower bomb, bomb cost mm -hmm. or system cost, uh, smaller solution size. Um, the uh, I would say it, like I would say it, like faster design time because like if you had PCR mode and then like later on you found out you didn't need a transient and then they had to spin your whole board. But if you have PCR mode, if you have ZDP, then you're definitely quote unquote you're gonna meet it and then you wouldn't have um, you, know, there, you wouldn't have that possibility. Right? Can you talk a little bit more about the design the design aspect where you're saying? Um, what's the flexibility you get with ZDP? It sounds like if you're using peak current mode and something, maybe you have a higher demand or something, um, you have to redesign components or switch out components. Like if you, like if you found out that your transient, you, you you needed to stay with a certain window on your transient, mm -hmm. uh, then you and you design your board and you thought you were going to meet that and you didn't, then you would have to like add more capacitors or retune the circuit in order to do that, which could extend your design time. And so it, how do you deal with that in Z, with ZDP? Then for ZDP, like, it's the transient is so good that you, you're you not going to oh, okay. you're not gonna miss it. So just the performance is so good that there's not going to be an issue. Yeah. OK. OK. Um, do you want to talk about or explain how, um, how, why is the solution a smaller size? Why is it? Uh, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah so uh, with the faster transient, um, you can also reduce your output capacitors. Um, and uh, that saves you both on cost and size. Um, you know, these little tiny capacitors end up adding a lot to your system cost. Okay. And typically, you go from like what's a typical peak current solution versus a ZDP solution for a similar application? Yeah, so we were looking at a core voltage rail of uh, 0.75 volts for a uh, popular SOC, mm -hmm. uh, and compared to our competitors, um, at the same switching frequency. Uh, we were able to reduce the capacitance uh, by, um, I, think a, I think it was about a third. And then uh, if we go to the higher switching frequency, we can cut it in half. And so that half as many capacitors? Half as many capacitors. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's not only cost, it's also solution size solution for size, yeah. requirements. Yeah. It makes your board layout a lot easier. Yeah. You need fewer components that you have to try to squeeze in there. Okay. Okay. Um, are there other, you know, other benefits of that we should talk about? I'm trying to remember. You kind of went through. We'll go through the bullet list again. But I think that's the main. Those are the main things. Okay. Okay. Um, how about uh, talk through, like, what types of, um, why why are we seeing more demand for these higher power solutions? What what's happening? Yeah. So like. Uh, Autonomous driving and driver assistance. Mm -hmm. um, then you require like an SOC, uh, whole computing solution um, that has a lot of rails. Um, so like the the hundred amp rail gets covered by uh, a different the computing group. But, okay. the, but uh, all the uh, like the intermediate buses and uh, some of the medium power rails. Uh, are the prime targets for the ZDP. And what systems are those? Like typically what systems are doing those medium and lower power rails? Um, within that compute box, they'll have many, many rails. Right. Um, and then also uh, some like an ancillary things like, uh, for example, the front camera. Okay. Uh, you might have like a, like a Xilinx FPGA, for example, that uh, is uh, doing <coughs> some processing before it sends the data to the, um, Okay. Uh, to the central computing box. Okay. So it's camera systems, it's... Uh, Radar, uh, okay. well, may not. Uh, camera, uh, the central compute, uh, the central computer is where we see most of the activity. Okay. Um, and also, um, LiDAR to an extent. Okay. Yeah. So central compute, cameras, LiDAR, yeah. those, are, those are big areas where, um, is it especially or specifically um, important for them with the bill of materials, the size, the yeah, just because they have so many rails that okay. they have to do that they have okay. to do okay. um, that this the board uh, space becomes a, a big premium. Okay, all right. Um, anything else? What, like, are there other questions? That customers that you're you're asking or answering frequently or trying to explain frequently that uh, they think would be good to 
good to add? Um, And I mean, usually, uh, they, like they just want to double check it's not CO2, right? <laughs> <laughs> they want to say yes. I'm not going to have any frequency issues. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think that covers most of it. Okay. Well, thanks for your time. I think okay. it was great to uh, uh, take a deep dive into how ZDP works and applications. And and uh, thank you. Okay, thank you.